Hello and welcome to the SBK Cheltenham Festival Review Podcast. My name's Tom Collins and again I'm joined by SBK Betting Podcast regular Ross Miller. The festival is now over. Four days of the 2022 Cheltenham Festival done. Um, it feels like they've gone by in a flash. I had a pretty torrid Thursday and you probably, if you watched yesterday's episode of this, you'd have seen um, that I was pretty down in the dumps, but today was much better. Vauban got us off to a good start. Bookmakers were in dismay. Um, State man then won. There are plenty of short price uh, favourites today. And I also backed 18 to 1 winner. Nice guy. Ross, how did you get on today? Did you win? Probably end of the day level, Tom. So probably the week just a little bit ahead. Um, I had a sneak each way on the uh, Bainbridge, the Joseph O'Brien winner of the last to uh, back up my nap, which departed at the second. So um, I was I was glad I went with him, um, but just really enjoyed the week. I think it's it's uh, been a, a long time coming um, and uh, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I was down in the dumps thinking, God, I hate this. Where's the flat racing coming? But uh, look, in hindsight, I, I've probably been a bit dramatic and it was very enjoyable. I think the atmosphere today, from what I saw on TV anyway, um, was fantastic. I was supposed to be there. Don't know if I wish I was there or not because it was very rowdy. Um, but look, it was a great atmosphere, a great week of racing. Should say before we move on, commiserations to connections of Jinto. That was extremely unfortunate. He looked like he was playing a big part in the Albert Bartlett before breaking down. Um, it was a very unfortunate scene to see. Now, before we move on to uh, the Gold Cup, which was the feature on the Friday, let's cover a couple of other races. Uh, we had Bill Away, phenomenal rider Patrick Mullins. I know you're going to mention something about this in a second, Ross. Um, Ellie, Ellie May won for punters. JP McManus and Willie Mullins again. What was your highlight today, aside from the Gold Cup? Uh, I think equine highlight was, was Vauban. I mean, he just looked very special because he quickened up going to the last, landed in a bit of a heap at the back of the last, and then within a matter of three strides, he had the race won. You know, he showed explosive turn of foot. So he's exciting going forward. You're probably disappointed that Willie has put a bit of cold water on the flat. I'm, I'm delighted. Um, and already... I'll give myself maybe a couple of days thinking about chart next year, and then I'll try and park it. But a champion hurdle with possibly Bob Ollinger maybe coming back over hurdles. Uh, Constitution Hill, Honeysuckle, and Vauban. That sounds all right to me. Um, and then probably riding performance, probably of the week, although I feel a bit sorry for Derek Fox, who was brilliant on the first day and, you know, sort of recency bias, as Jess would call it. But Patrick Mullins was brilliant on Billaway. Uh, he never jumped the fence. He never travelled, and he didn't give up. But the thing I'll mention is he has copped a five-day ban for overuse of, uh, of the stick. <laughs> is it right that, you know, he breaks the rules and wins the race? Uh, I'm not sure. It's, it's a, probably a conversation for another time, but it's, it's there as a, as a win anyway. Yeah, it's an interesting dilemma, that, Ross. I'm not too sure what side of the fence I sit on. Um, watching the race live, I hadn't had a bet in the race, so I was completely neutral. But that ride that Patrick Mullins gave Bill away gave me goosebumps. My hairs were standing up on, on end. It was phenomenal. At no point did he look like he was winning. He was six lengths down at the last fence and somehow he galvanised Billaway. He didn't jump very well um, to win the race and beat wing leader. Yes, he, he got the suspension. It is cheating. So it's definitely a, another discussion for another day. Um, but, you know, it does pour a little bit of cold water on the race. Now let's move on to the Gold Cup, the big race, the race that everyone wants to win. Jockeys, trainers, owners, punters want to win. The bookmakers want to win. This year went to the punters and went to the jockey, I think, that deserved the victory. Rachel Blackmore, second last year on Aplutard. She had the choice to ride Manella Indo. She decided Aplutard last year and she came off in second. Manella Indo won the race. This year, different story though, Ross. Yeah, she was brilliant, wasn't she? Um, and I got that bang wrong. I, I <laughs> sort of couldn't really see him reversing the form, but he reversed it and some. Um, a, a tactical race, very tactical Gold Cup. Um, and she, as Ruby Walsh said on the TV, uh, just such coolness to take a pull, not go chasing Robbie Power early um, and then take it up going to the last. And then the way he quickened up the hill, he's clearly a smart horse. Being greedy, I would like to see him come back next year and see one of these sort of unrelenting gold cups where they just go from the beginning, sort of the Denman type gold cup, see if he can if he can display the stamina required for that. But he was visually very impressive and it looks like a strong a strong heat you know there's nothing in there really that finished and you thought oh, I shouldn't finish there all the right ones were there going to the last so yeah looked like a great performance 
Yeah, I agree. Um, the way he quickened up up the hill, I thought was extremely impressive. I wasn't expecting that. Manella Endo was tired and, and eventually finished a distant second, but um, Apu tired, really quick and clear, hit the line powerfully. I think he was benefited by the tactical race, as you say. There were so many in with a chance at the second last and even the last, I mean, Aplutar kind of had the race at his mercy at that point, but uh, it was an interesting race. Rachel Blackmore was just so cool for such a long period of, of the race, despite being on the back foot. Um, two horses we should mention from the race, Chantry House didn't turn up again. He looked la la lacklustre on his previous start at Cheltenham, um, and he just didn't show up in the Gold Cup. Galvin maybe missed a couple of fences. What did you, re what did you reckon of his performance? I think he probably of all of them would have been least suited by the sort of tactical slowly run affair in the in the middle part of the race he would want i think an end-to-end -end gallop given that he won the the national hunt chase last year over three miles six and looks a thorough stayer um but yeah the writing was on the wall from him down the hill my selection tornado fly just never looked to jump and it wasn't like they went quick and got him at it he just never found a rhythm and uh, to be honest i knew my fate from about the second fence which was a fairly unhappy experience but it does mean you can then switch off and just just watch the race as a whole so i'll take the positive from that yeah, that's, that's a good positive. I like it. And one positive that Willie Mullins will be taking from the whole meeting, not just from that race, but the whole meeting is the fact that he absolutely dominated once again. Um, I think he tallied the same amount of winners as the, all British trainers combined, which is remarkable. He seems to do this every year, um, dominates the festival. I think it was two to five to be leading trainer uh, with SBK prior to the meeting. He made those odds look silly. He romped clear, was never in any danger. He's just brilliant, isn't he, Ross? He's brilliant and he's just such a gracious winner. Um, there's a few in the sport that slightly rise my hackles with sort of their big sort of promotion of themselves. He goes quietly about his business. He's ever so gracious when he wins. He understands what it means to win um, and he isn't afraid to display emotion um, and always deflects the praise to other people within the team. You know, he gave Sean O'Keefe a, a, a really big talk up after uh, the Albert Bartlett and I think Sean O'Keefe is a, a, a ride to follow I did mention him on the SK, SBK platform before the start of the festival I think he's always looking to find the heir apparent to the current jockey so when he had Ruby he had Paul Townend coming through I wouldn't be surprised now to see Sean O'Keefe get more and more rides going through the next sort of 12 to 24 months and uh, I think he's a, a ride to follow so yeah delight to see Willie win delight to see Rachel win I think it, as a sport we sometimes shoot ourselves in the foot but with Willie and Rachel winning I think it's it's always good for the sport. Yeah, I agree. Rachel's the, the fan favourite rider and she deserves to be. She's propelled herself to the top of the game. Willie Mullins has been at the top of the game for a long time. I think it's going to be uh, kind of the same story next year as well with the likes of Fasal Vega, Vauban, um, the nice guy. He won virtually every novice event. Yeah, I mean, Willie Mullins just dominated. Um, let's move on to Saturday's racing, Ross. I don't know if you've had a great look at this because... I can't say I have after the, the whole furore around Cheltenham Festival. Um, I've only had a brief look. I'll come to my nap next. But tell me about the horses you like on Saturday. Well, so I've had a, a, probably a bit more of an in-depth look than you because I got the uh, the short straw to do the uh, Utoxta <laughs> card on the uh, SBK platform. The eight race card uh, for Utoxta. Um, two I really like. Um, in the 225, Young Bull for Harry Whittington. Harry Whittington's had two desperate years, really lost a lot of horses. There's no doubting his ability to train. Young Bull has been away from the track 14 months for repairing at Newbury this year. Ran a really good race for tiring late on. It's now down to a mark of 128. I think he's been found a nice opportunity tomorrow by his young trainer. And then my next best comes in the feature race, the uh, Midland Grand National, Mamela for Harry Fry. He'll be high after a win last uh, yesterday with Love Envoy. Um, Mamela is a horse that's been staying on really well over tough three-mile three mile plus trips, round tracks like Exeter, which take a bit of getting. I think she's interesting now up to this four and a quarter mile trip. She's nicely handicapped. And I think she'll outrun her odds, um, double digit odds with SBK. I think around about 16 to one the last time I looked. A couple of interesting selections there for you, Toxter. And if you do want to see all of Ross's race by race picks, uh, make sure to go to news.smarkets.com and you can see his analysis and overview there. The only horse that I like, like on Saturday at this stage anyway, I say like, I haven't really looked at any other cards. So there may be a couple more um, but the one that stood out to me is a horse called Knight Narcissus, who runs in the 7.30 at Wolverhampton. I do love my uh, my sand donkeys, as my dad would say. Um, a little bit of Saturday or weather evening action. Uh, she hinted that she could be quite good from a long way out a couple of years ago, in fact, when she was a two-year-old. It's never really quite progressed into the filly that everyone thought we might see. Um, she's finished second on six occasions. But last time out at Wolverhampton over six furlongs, she bolted up. I think a six pounds rise is pretty lenient. Um, and I expect her to go in again from stall three. 
that brings us to the end of this podcast, Ross, and the end of a, a long week of podcasts. How have you found it? I've really, I've really enjoyed it, TC. It's uh, a good excuse to miss out on the school run. Sorry, love, I can't do it. I'm watching the racing for work. Um, so that's been uh, handy and uh, re- really, really enjoyed it. And uh, looking forward to, I suppose, Grand National meeting is the next big meeting and then into punch us down and then we'll indulge you with a bit of flat racing through the summer before it all starts again exactly that i can't wait for the flat racing or the grand national in fact that comes on my birthday weekend as i say this is the end of the podcast but make sure you tune in every friday for our svk betting podcast which is hosted by jess stafford james millman will join myself and ross as well we'll be covering saturday's action every week i hope you've enjoyed this mini series i hope you're back to all the winners at cheltenham until we see you next time be lucky